Good morning, everybody. Before unpacking today's scriptures, I think it's worthwhile, at least for myself, to acknowledge the reality of the recent presidential election. I think it's such an epic occasion in our country's history that to not address it, even for a moment, almost is like, you know, there's an elephant in the room. And I think it's always, I, I can't stand elephants in the room. The, the difficult challenge, of course, is from the pulpit remaining politically neutral and prudent in things that I am passionate about. But yet last, there was a sermon that I gave last week about preaching politics and the parameters and the responsibilities of that from the pulpit. And that was posted on our YouTube page. I don't want to go into that, but I do want to mention one of the points there, which is allowing love to have the last word. Because there's undoubtedly unresolvable or unreconcilable differences on both sides. Within our own household, within our own parish, within our own church, within our own families, there's people that stand on different sides of the aisle. And we know how fragile and delicate of a topic this is. Even among our own parishioners, there were some people who posted on their social media that as a result of the election, they wanted to barf. Other people burst out in praise and worship. What a variety of contrast. And the differences oftentimes cannot be resolved with arguments. Oftentimes the arguments end up leading, shedding more heat than light and often don't change people's lives. Change has to happen often from within a person. And, and so the, the reality of recognizing that even those persons whom I intensely disagree with, to recognize that even though I think some ideologies might be demonic, to not demonize the other, one, the other people who think differently to not dehumanize them, to not allow the perceptions of social media, the mudslinging of politics in the public domain to contaminate my mindset so much that I cease to see other people that think di drastically different than me as human. To recognize that even those who voted differently than me even those who voted for someone whom I would never vote for, you know, what's that expression? Over my dead body. Nevertheless, to acknowledge they are equally made in God's image and likeness as we are, equally called to be children of God, and equally love their own and cherish their own children to give the benefit of the doubt always, to acknowledge that they are people of goodwill, even though our ideas and understanding of what, what, how we to go about bringing about our ideas and understanding about how to pursue the common good are drastically different. For example, listening to the news from CNN to Fox, it's like different universes. Entirely different universe. And how do we allow, and then in this context, which is the reality of, of where we live, some people this past week, after Wednesday, after Sunday, Tuesday night, were having a meltdown, feeling like this was a nightmare. And for others, in elation, feeling a sigh of relief, and that an understanding that God's protection and blessing is postponing far worse things from hastening. So in light of this context, how do we allow love to have the last word? To acknowledge, I'm not going to change that person in my life, in my family. I'm not going to change their, their mentality. Because these differences come from a different paradigm, a whole different perception, perspective, approach, a philosophy and spirit that's behind it. 
that are vastly different from one another. And I can't hardly change that in someone else. But what I can do is I can love them despite the differences. I can do that. And you know what? That's all that God asks of us. That's all. That's all he asks of us. Not to try to change their mind, not to try to convert them, despite whatever side one may stand, but to love them. And let God decide the rest. That's it. And so we only have one life to live. And we're responsible to make the most of it. And at the end of our life, we will be responsible to how we lived, how we made the best use of our time, how we lived out our vocation to love in the context of our current challenges, how we allowed love to prevail, righteousness over just being right, how we did I already say that? Make the best use of our time because that's one of the things when we see God face to face, we're going to realize, oh my gosh, I wasted so much time on frivialities, on things that have no meaning and importance. How I could have made better use of my time. And so if, you've, if you're familiar with the illumination of conscience, there's an amazing movie out still called The Great Warning that talks about that illumination of conscience, which whether we experience it in this life privately or collectively, we will all experience it the moment our soul leaves our body and we come before the judgment seat of Christ. And so that, that, that reality of coming before God, it's not meant to be something scary. It's meant to be something inspiring. Because if we're living in friendship with Jesus, then as it says in verse 28, if we're living in His friendship and we know His love and we're living in that love, we experience His closeness on the daily, then we long to see Him face to face. We eagerly await Him. And therefore, to, to, to leave our bodies, that moment of our death, is meant to be the grand finale, the graduation, the, the homecoming, to see the beauty of our God face to face is the most glorious and exquisite sight and re-gift imaginable. As we celebrate this Eucharist, in Holy Communion, we're meant heaven comes down to earth, that we may have a foretaste of our destiny to be totally one with the love of loves, beyond which there is nothing greater. That we may be strengthened to fight the good fight of faith amid spiritual warfare, and to know what it means to love our enemies. Those who think and are convinced about values that might be deeply different than ours. But how do we allow love to prevail over division and anger? This is what we will be judged on. This is the measure of our character. This is the measure of our Christianity. May Christ grant us the grace to live up to our vocation to become who we are meant to be in his image and his likeness now and for all eternity.